Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Lisa Washburn, Senior Director, Product Management at SecureWorks. Lisa, pleasure to be with you here today. Thank you for having me. Certainly. So Lisa, today we're going to discuss extended detection and response, also known as XDR, which is a new approach to threat detection and response that provides holistic protection against cyber attacks, unauthorized access, and misuse. So beyond the obvious, why are organizations turning to XDR? And more importantly, why is it being done so, so rapidly now? Yeah, so I think to answer that question, you know, I wanted to just state a little bit more about, you know, some of the characteristics of an XDR solution. Thank you. Because um, I think one of the most important things to understand is that an XDR really is meant to bring together um, security relevant data across an organization's entire computing landscape. So across the endpoint network, cloud identity, other business systems to, to gain that visibility required for detecting and responding to cyber threats. So um, to answer why organizations are turning to XDR, first, um, you know, some of the organizations are are moving towards an XDR from a situation where they're trying to manage all those disparate security controls across their endpoint solutions and network solutions. Um, and it's, it's you know, too difficult for them. So they're trying to do that from a centralized solution. Um, but we also see organizations moving from uh, another type of solution like a EDR or endpoint detection and response or a SIM solution, um, security information and event management. Uh, and, and really from a SIM solution, uh, while the SIM solutions help them kind of satisfy requirements around log retention and compliance, uh, they weren't necessarily purpose built for security use cases. And so customers are telling us that they're finding those types of solutions difficult to configure for you know, the use cases, the security use cases that they're interested in. Um, and they end up with, with a lot of false positives because they don't really uh, have the, the tools and capabilities to filter out just uh, the things that, that they want to see. Well, thank you for really expanding on that and discussing the characteristics of XDR. I think that's very important for our audience to understand the differences between the two. And I think in terms of security, it's pretty obvious why the migration towards XDR is quite important, certainly at this point. And thank you for pointing that out. So we know organizations really struggle with using the best uses of their resources when they're dealing with cybersecurity, certainly when it comes to purchasing of security tools, of personnel, and they struggle with that and trying to figure out what to do first, how to use their money, how to position their personnel, and what comes first. So in your opinion, how does an organization make the best use of their cybersecurity resources? Yeah, you know, Many organizations don't have enough security resources on staff, like we know, and, and it's not just due to budget challenges. Um, there's really a worldwide shortage of security experts. So exactly. it's hard for companies to, to find and hire security personnel and then even harder to, to keep them sometimes. And you know the fact that security responsibilities in an organization can cover a really wide range of responsibilities, um, you know, maintaining and enforcing policies and procedures, um, performing hygiene activities like vulnerability scanning and, and patching, um, keeping up with the latest threat intelligence, and then you know monitoring and responding to all these threats. The list goes on and on. So I think it's important for an organization to consider which security responsibilities they want to keep in-house and which they want to outsource. For example, um, finding and keeping personnel on staff with the skills to do active threat hunting or incident response may be cost prohibitive. Um, also, companies will wanna consider tools and services that can make their internal teams as efficient as possible. So a solution that requires a ton of care and feeding or configuration or policy management um, might not be the best for a company that has a very limited security staff. That company, should probably seek out a solution that you know filters out that noise, 
enables automated response, et cetera. Well, that's great advice. And I think even throughout what you were saying, there's really no one size fits all for every organization. And they really need to understand what their makeup is, what their needs are, and what they actually have in terms of not just, as you said, budget, but personnel, talents, and what makes sense for them to outsource and how to do it in an appropriate, secure way. So thank you for that explanation. And, you know, leading into that, organizations really have so much to deal with in protecting their organizations. And how does automation factor into building a strong cyber defense? And when we talk automation, certainly AI is somewhat integrated in that, but there's pitfalls with automation and there's a lot of pluses. Can you really expand on that for our audience, please? Yeah, so in the realm of what we were talking about from a yeah. <clears throat> XDR solution, for instance, or even helping with that, that staffing mm -hmm. challenge, sure. um, tools that automate tasks like scanning and remediation prioritization, monitoring and responding, um, automatically layering in TI for, you know, machine learning and, and, you know, detection capabilities, enrichment, those all help to streamline activities for the security team. But, but in general, I'd say across any of the activities that they're doing, intelligent automation, I think is really about reduction in human error. Mm. And it can take away the need for teams to perform repetitive tasks. So that's that's one of kind of the low hanging fruit of automation is you know removing the need for repetitive tasks to, to continue to happen. Let the teams focus more on complex activities and, and frankly you know the more interesting aspects of their roles, um, which may actually help with employee retention as well. Well, those are very important areas that you covered, and it's not so straightforward when organizations in general talk about automation. A lot of them are saying, well, it just speeds things up. So I like the way that you broke it down and highlighted the different importance pieces of automation and why organizations are tending to go that route. So that's important for our audience to hear as well. So I'd be remiss if I didn't ask why Tejas XDR. Yeah, I, I think I can answer that with a summary of some of the things we've already discussed. So we didn't specifically say risk reduction, but when you're talking about Tejas XDR's detection and response capabilities, um, really what a company is looking for is reducing their, their risk of cyber threats. Um, and so th the thing that makes Tejas unique and different is the fact that it's built upon SecureWorks uh, counter threat unit threat intelligence, um, which has you know been building for 20 odd years and years of experience uh, that our team has in picking out that malicious activity from the noise so that companies can, can swiftly respond to threats. I think second, Tages is an open XDR platform. So I talked about the importance of gaining visibility across the entire um, computing environment in terms of making sure that, that nothing's slipping through the cracks in terms of observations that could indicate malicious activity. Um, that's certainly one good thing about having an open platform. But but the other thing is, you know, back to back to the budget and the investments that companies have been making, uh, Tejas allows companies to maximize their existing security control investment. So that's really important to our customers. And then, uh, you know, lastly, I'd say the people and the personnel. So Tejas is backed by expert security personnel to help fill that talent gap that I talked about. Um, and so we have access to uh, expert security guidance with a, a feature we call Ask an Expert. So our customers can get live access to security practitioners 24 seven. And we have a 24 seven SOC that will triage and investigate threats uh, on behalf of our customers. And then all of our customers have priority access to expert uh, threat hunting and incident response personnel. So really, I'd say superior detection and response built on years of threat intelligence experience, an open platform, and access to security experts, experts to fill the talent gap. So Lisa, I always like to ask my guests to share some sort of knowledge that they have around cybersecurity. And you've been in the industry for quite a while and you have a wealth of information. And what tip would you like to share with our audience, whether it being cybersecurity in the business world, within the organization, or on a personal level? Yeah, I'd say that you probably, 
probably the audience has heard this many, many times. There's there's no silver bullet in security. Um, se security and keeping you know customers safe and is is a multifaceted problem. Um, and and really trying to stay one, two, three, four steps ahead of the the threat adversaries is difficult. Um, they're well funded. They're um, band together um, for for you know for political or more likely monetary gain. So um, I'd say don't try to go it alone. Search for partners and and um, vendors that can help, uh, especially ones that have been doing this for a long time. Um, we we complement from from a secure work standpoint. We have customers that um, we complement their very um, uh, large and accomplished staff, or we can help, you know, really small customers that um, want to turn, you know, everything over to a vendor. So that would kind of be my tip is um, to, to look for and, and utilize help uh, outside of just your organization. I do love that you shared that. It's it's a very interesting conversation that is happening in the cybersecurity world today. You know, a number of years ago, people were pretty much siloed and not sharing information or looking for the right type of partners, but going at it alone. And we have seen the shift to looking towards that. So thank you very much for sharing that. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure. Thank you.